What's happening guys and welcome back to the channel for today's video We're gonna be checking out the Transformers Rise of the Beasts Weaponizer Wheeljack and Battlemaster Rhinox I do believe this is one of the few remaining movie line figures that I have left to review unless Hasbro decide to whack out a surprise wave 3 There really aren't that many Rise of the Beasts figures left to check out Which is kind of a shame because I do think there are a few more characters Especially after watching the movie that they could have done But anyway as we very quickly check out the packaging we get Transformers Rise of the Pablo We get some pretty cool CG renders of how Will Jack will appear in Rise of the Beasts. I know it's a very controversial design because it is such a stark contrast to how we left him in Bumblebee but gonna be honest guys I actually really am digging it and as we come around here to the back we get a few product shots. Yes this does include the Ass Cannon Rhinox which I'm actually super glad to be able to get a second one of these into the collection. So all that being said let's crack this open. Let's stack it up alongside some of the other Rise of the Beast figures including his deluxe class counterpart. And here we have the Weaponizer Wheeljack. And you know what? This is actually pretty decent. All things considered, for this thing only retailing for around £15, including the Beast Battlemaster, I do think this is a pretty decent, kind of fun, enjoyable, gimmicky figure. And if you're having difficulties tracking down the Movie Line Deluxe, or, you know, maybe you can't wait until the Studio Series version gets released, then I don't think this is going to be kind of a bad, cheap alternative just as a placeholder. And to be honest with you, I do think it's a lot better than the Weaponizer Optimus Primal, which is kind of crazy considering that Wheeljack is definitely a side character in the movie but anyways we check out the details as you guys can see looking as strange as ever I mean we get those massive dorky glasses I will say the sculpt is nowhere near as impressive as the deluxe version but you know what this actually reminds me more of Steve Urkel than that deluxe version so I guess there's something and an attention to detail which I am so glad they smacked into this figure would be the seat belts becoming the braces of the bot mode that is pretty cool and do you know what despite this whole area here using fake pieces in some ways I do think it's a little more accurate when in comparison to the movie line deluxe because we do get the proper circular headlights as well as the side view mirrors unfortunately none of this is picked out in paint but yeah it's pretty nicely detailed there is a lot of brown and kind of beige on this guy which you know what is not the best color in the world but it's definitely not the worst and it is kind of similar to what we saw from the deluxe version and as we turn it around here to the back a lot of hollow spaces but 15 quid honestly what are you going to do and unfortunately he doesn't have the movie accurate door wings but for this being only a weaponizer i do think maybe that would have been a little tricky now in terms of articulation again incredibly surprising he might just be the most articulated weaponizer figure that we've so far checked out so the head is on a swivel it will look left to right the shoulders are on ball joints so they'll go the full 360 as well as hinge up and down we get some nice ball joints here out of the elbow surprisingly very sturdy you know that's something that cannot be said for some of the other beast alliance figures so that's pretty cool surprisingly a waist joint which i thought was super awesome the hips will kick forward to that far as well as back to that far out to the sides again we do get kind of double jointed knees due to the way transform so ball joints which can kick that far and then you can use the hinge joint to kind of get a slightly better range out of that they'll also rotate the full 360 and finally we do get a tiny bit of toe pivot and as you guys can see it is pretty decently detailed so that is pretty much wheeljack in a nutshell let's check out the beast battle master rhinox now we have already reviewed this figure you know it did come packaged as the first wave of beast battle masters gonna be honest so glad to kind of get a second opportunity in picking one of these up in the collection because hands down it was the best beast battle master now as you guys can see i have the original release here on the left unfortunately whilst the sculpt is the same the paint is severely lacking i mean they did decide to paint the horn so i guess that's something but a lot of the mechanical detail is just kind of plain and boring so yeah that just kind of suck but anyway let's maximize this guy up into his ass cannon or should i say his shattling gun so you are just going to want to split his but wide open we can then bring these pieces here to the back snap the cheeks together just like this you'll then want to take these legs and rotate these sections here outwards and these ones should just very nicely sit into place we can then flip out that handle and bang there we have one of rhinox's gatling guns and now i have two of these not only can you arm our wheeljack up to the teeth but you could also smack these on the studio series rhinox because he does come with kind of a sledgehammer and not those traditional kind of beast force gatling guns and to be honest with you i don't don't think it would actually be a bad look at all so again for 15 quid considering what you get here i do think it is pretty decent now as we jump into a few comparisons, here we have a Weaponizer Wheeljack alongside that Movie Line Deluxe. And again, going back to my whole point about pricing, I do think this is a pretty decent figure for only 15 quid. I mean, in some ways, I do kind of prefer the chest design despite using fake pieces when in comparison to the Movie Deluxe because they did replicate the circular headlights, which I think is pretty awesome. But as we spin these guys around here to the back, of course, the Weaponizer version is a lot more hollow and unfortunately doesn't have the door wings that the Deluxe version has. But in terms of scale, as you guys can see, 
they are pretty much smack on. So again, if you're having difficulties tracking this one down, you just want a wheel jack, you know, a placeholder to tie you over until you can find this or the Studio Series version comes out, then I don't think it's going to be a bad shout. Here's how he stacks up alongside the Rise of the Beast Studio Series Bumblebee, Weaponizer Optimus Primal, and again, I definitely think Wheeljack is much better than Primal, which is kind of crazy because, as I said previously, you would think they'd try their best to make this the best as possible, but yeah, unfortunately, it does just seem like Primal is probably going to end up being the weakest out of the Weaponizer assortment. And then here we have him alongside the Weaponizer Optimus Prime, which also was a very strong figure. You know, I kind of regard these Weaponizer releases as being kind of basic deluxe classes. They do kind of remind me of basic deluxe figures, but as you guys can see, pretty much again on par in terms of design, accuracy, articulation, and paintwork. And then finally, here's how he stacks up alongside the movie line Voyager class Optimus Prime. Now, as we get stuck into the transformation for Wheeljack, to kind of go back to my earlier point, it really does remind me of a simplified deluxe. So to kickstart things off with, you are going to want to take the feet and just attach them and spin them all the way here into the back of these hollow cavities. Do the same here for this side. We can then combine the two halves just like this. The next step you're going to want to do is take the backpack, hinge this section out and lift this upwards. Now he does have ports here. You won't use these in vehicle mode. So I guess in theory, you could kind of hinge this piece down and give him an almost weaponized mode in robot mode so you have a few options which again I think is pretty cool once you've done that and kind of lifted it upwards we can then take the chest piece detach this here away from the body and slide this section here all the way up to the top and then this front part of the vehicle will just come over and will snap very securely into place we can then rotate this section here all the way around again another very nice attention to detail would be them actually sculpting in the spinal column this is something that you only see during transformation so for a weaponizer quite impressive next up you're then going to want to take the thigh and hinge them here all the way up and as I'm sure you guys would have guessed we'll then take those double jointed knees and basically just bring them down to create something along the lines of this we can now bring the shoulders down take these panels here which are attached onto the sides of the forearms and just flip them out do the exact same here for this side so just bring them down slightly and what you're going to want to do is basically angle this here so this tab can shoot underneath basically the front headlight of the vehicle mode so snap that section in and then we can just tab that piece there into place and do the exact same here on the opposite side. So snap that in, snap the roof of the vehicle in, make sure all of these tabs are nice and smacked in. And bang, there we have Wheeljack, aka Pablo, fully transformed into his nice, cute little Volkswagen van. And again, for a weaponizer, not a bad looking vehicle mode. Now, of course, it does severely lack any of the wicked kind of detail that the real vehicle has in the movie and even the deluxe class. So that does kind of suck, you know, it's very plain and boring here from the side perspective. But in terms of proportions and the way it comes together, I think it is pretty decent. Now, as we check out the front of the vehicle, I'm going to mention something which after I say, you guys are probably never going to be able to unsee. This to me, me looks like a Pixar car from the Cars movie. I mean, these little hinge joints, which are used to kind of attach onto the roof, look like eyes. I'm not sure if that was their intention, but yeah, once you see it, you are literally never able to unsee it. But pretty nice detail. I mean, we even get the Autobot logo, which has been sculpted. This is engraved in there. So yeah, it is pretty nicely done. Overall, pretty impressive. You know, the wheels also do roll. They're not static. They're not fixed or sculpted into place like we've seen from even some of the Optimus Prime figures from this line. So yeah, all in all, a pretty decently done looking figure. Now, as we check out a few comparisons here in vehicle mode, here we have a weaponizer Pablo alongside the real Pablo, that being the deluxe version. And much like in robot mode, pretty much identical, basically smack on in terms of the scale. They are basically exactly the same. So yeah, overall, definitely not a bad little weaponizer. Here's how he stacks up alongside his weaponizer buddy, that being Beast Battlemaster Rhinox, just so you guys can see roughly how they fare. Here he is alongside the weaponizer Optimus Prime, and despite them being very similarly matched in robot mode, Prime is actually quite a bit smaller, but it's just due to kind of the mass shifting of the front of the cab holding most of the robot mode pieces, so... Yeah, you know, not too bad, of course, not to scale, but definitely not the end of the world for a few gimmicky figures. Here's how he fares alongside that movie line Voyager Optimus Prime, and considering this guy's the same size as the Deluxe release, again, you know, I do think these size up pretty nicely, and not too far off when in comparison to kind of the Autobot picture that was released as part of the marketing for Rise of the Beast, so... I do think they could kind of work in a display until we get the Studio Series version or until you guys, you know, maybe are able to find that individual deluxe release. Here he is stacked up alongside the Rise of the Beasts off-road Bumblebee. 
And then finally, Weaponizer Optimus Primal, which to kind of go back to my early point, looks to be the weakest. I mean, this is not a beast mode. I mean, Optimus Primal as it is, already has a very simple transformation. So why they couldn't have tried their best to make this figure a little nicer to match Optimus Prime and Wheeljack from this Weaponizer assortment, and even the upcoming RC, is kind of beyond me. But yeah, this is how these two stack up in their alt modes. And wrapping up on this review for the Transformers Rise of the Beasts, Weaponizer Wheeljack and Beast Battlemaster Rhinox. Overall, it's a pretty neat set. I mean, as I said beforehand, for something which does only retail for 15 quid, I think it's a pretty decent pickup. I'd love to get your opinion down in the comment section below. What do you guys think of this set? Is it one that you're going to be picking up clearly out of kind of novelty, or will you just be waiting for the Movie Line Deluxe or the inevitable Studio Series version? Until my next video, I thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.